Thanks for joining us, everybody. This is the uh, Google Photography Prize Hangout with Photography Experts. This is our fourth in a series. Um, and our expert today is Susan Bright. Um, Susan Bright is a writer and curator of photography. Um, she's done numerous incredible exhibitions. She's published several books uh, on the on art of photography or art photography. She's done another book on self-portraiture, and she's currently working on a series uh, uh, and an exhibition about uh, motherhood. Um, and, uh, and she's a great voice and a really strong, uh, important person within the photography community. Um, and she also was one of the, the judges for the prize this year, the Google Photography Prize. Um, all of our participants today um, were winning finalists for the, the prize. Um, many congratulations to everybody. Um, so today's discussion is pretty much going to revolve around um, the, the prize itself, um, your own work. We wanted to talk to some of the finalists to really discuss and understand um, why they make photographs, why they entered the competition, what their experiences were, um, if they were happy to see their work up on the walls of the Saatchi Gallery, uh, and, uh, and yeah, and just have a nice conversation with somebody who knows a lot about photography. So I will be quiet now, and I'll let Susan take over. So go ahead, Susan. Okay. I, I wanted to start really with a question about how you um, started a relationship with photography and um, I'm going to call it a photographic epiphany. I'm curious to know if you had one or not or has photography always been something that's been in your life. Um, I'll, I'll give you my, I'll start, I'll start the ball rolling and give you an example of my photographic epiphany which was after studying an awful lot of art history, I did four years of art history and never looked at photography at all, uh, I started interning at the B&A, at the Victoria and Albert Museum in London. And uh, it was there in the photography department that I was first shown a, a proper photographic print. Um, I'd never seen one in the flesh. It was an actual Adams. It was an absolutely beautiful print. And I felt like I'd been kicked in the belly. It was the most amazing thing I'd ever seen. Um, and I suddenly got very, very curious and I wanted to know everything there was about photography and I wanted to be the, the person that just thought and worked in photography the rest of my life, which is luckily for me is how it panned out. Um, and I now see the world photographically. I think if big events happen in my life, I can only make sense of them if it's, it's through looking back historically at photographs or looking at contemporary photography. So for me it was a real, a real moment, um, but I understand for a lot of people it's that something much more gradual or that's always been there. So perhaps Dana, uh, we could start with you. Did you have a moment or was it something that's always been there? Um, I don't have any, like, any real story about how I got to photography, but I, from a really young age, I knew that I wanted to study photography, and that's what I wanted to do. I don't know why, I don't know how I got to it, I just, once I got my first camera, I just couldn't stop. Okay, <laughs> mm -hmm. great. How about, how about you, Balaj? Well, um, in high school, we had, I think the last year, we had this um, course of photography, and it was, it was a half a year course, and then with two friends of mine, we kept going to the um, dark room, and I just, it just, um, I think I like the atmosphere of the dark room itself, and so. Yeah, there's something very magical about that space, isn't there? Yeah. <laughs> so I kept doing it, and then um, there, there's this university where I'm going now, and I tried the, um, the application, and they got me for the second try, and I'm graduating this year. Great. And Oliver? Um, I guess there wasn't really a, a single precise moment. Um, I've always been interested in art and always like wanted some form of like creative expression. Um, and then when I was like 15, I got my first camera, my dad handed down some of his old film cameras that he had when he was my age. Um, so I was just kind of like playing around with them and stuff and um, was looking on the internet at sites like Flickr and DeviantArt and things and just got quite interested in other people's pictures. Um, so yeah, I guess it just started from there. It's just kind of another 
outlet for me for kind of creative expression and stuff. Okay, great. And Victor? <coughs> I actually had no idea I wanted to be a photographer until about uh, three years ago. I, I studied uh, graphic design and I always wanted to be a, an art director at a nice magazine. And when I got my first editing job at a local newspaper, <laughs> I quickly realized that I was actually just playing Tetris and the photographers were having all the fun. <laughs> mm -hmm. They came back laughing with all the experience. They, they saw this guy, they went out on this trip. And I was just sitting in the office handling their creativity. And I still like editing and doing graphic design, but that was kind of a landmark that summer three years ago. I decided to, uh, I want to have some adventures myself. So Susan, what are you, uh, what is your next project? My next, I'm doing a, a curatorial PhD uh, at Goldsmiths College, which means I do an exhibition um, and I write about the process of, of curating and exhibiting. Mm -hmm. um, and that's next year at the Photographer's Gallery, it's the exhibition, and a thesis. So my, my interest at the moment is um, about media images and pictures of mothers in the media and how they're represented and what that kind of means on a bigger ideological scale. So it's, it's a little different from what I've been doing, but it's... Uh, Sounds like sociological. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of a mixture of that and, and, uh, and curatorial, the way of looking at the world um, through, through this prism, if you like. So that's all consuming and very good. I have a very broad question, which um, well, it, it might be hard to answer, but um, just because you were talking about you're, doing, you're going to do a project with the way that people are portrayed, where, where the mothers are portrayed. I was just wondering, like, how do you think, in general, photography has kind of affected um, individuals and, and society, and that how has it kind of change the way maybe people perceive things or um, the way people interact with each other or like uh, relate that to photographers and the people who are, have pictures taken of them but um, kind of what impact do you think photography has had kind of on humans in general is very I think, I think it's huge it's absolutely <laughs> huge and you can just you can chart it I mean if you look at pictures of the very earliest 20th century pictures where people had not had their photographs taken before. They were, they were awkward and stiff and the photographic process took a long time. So their whole relationship with the camera was something very strange and alien. And now by the age of one, my daughter knew, had a photograph face. She knew how to smile. She had taken thousands, I had taken thousands of pictures of her. Um, which is very different from, you know, when I was growing up and my parents were using film and it was expensive. Um, I wasn't used to seeing pictures of myself all the time. So I am very curious to find, to, to watch this generation of children grow up who grew up with digital cameras, how their relationship to photography is and how, uh, how easy they are with cameras, you know. And, that, so that's a very big change in a very short period of time as, a, as people's um, just relationship with it on a very kind of vernacular, familiar way. I think also going back to, to, um, to Oliver, what you were talking about before with this idea of, um, of sharing yourself with the world in some weir weird way with your photographs, that, that in particular this generation with social networking and, uh, and the web, that all of a sudden photography isn't, you know, even when you're making your own personal pictures, it's not just about you. It's not just for you. It's not just for your family or your friends. It, it's broadcast, you know, and I think yeah. that relationship is, is a massive shift in the last five, five or ten years, um, probably five years, uh, in terms of people are using photography as a, as a form of communication, as a form of language, as a form of kind of saying who they are and what they are and what they're doing and who their friends are and how they're living their lives. Um, and that's something even for me, you know, um, only only being kind of 10 or 15 years older than you, um, I'm assuming, is that, that that's a huge shift that when yeah. I, you know, my, my family album, my pictures of my friends were never broadcast to, to the world. Um, mm -hmm. So, <laughs> <laughs> do you think, 
It's good. Oh, ca no, carry on, carry on. Do you think it's a clearly a positive effect that photography and cameras and the spreading of digital photography has on, on people's lives? Um, I'm, I'm excited to see where it goes because I'm interested in photography and I'm interested in photography as a means of communication, you know, as a medium, literally, quite literally, a medium between people, a way of kind of talking to each other. So the fact that there's this explosion of people using photographs as a form of language, as a form of com communication, mm -hmm. you know, um, rather than text or, or uh, you know, uh, or talk or whatever, I think that's, uh, for me, fascinating. I don't know if it's it's going to go in a positive way or a negative way, but I think it's, for me, it's so exciting. So. I, I, th I, me too, and I think if you think of things like Instagram, where someone posts a picture and someone replies with a picture, so they have literally having conversations with, with photographs. That's new, that's different, mm -hmm. and it's like it says it all, you know, it's just like we don't need to talk, we just send each other pictures. And we've, and all, become, we've all become really literate in this language. We all kind of understand this language in a weird way on a certain common level. Um, and the fact that some of you are challenging that language through the, ma the work that you're making, you know, Balach, you're, you know, your work yeah. is, like you said, is challenging this, this medium, is kind of questioning, like, well, what does it mean to take a picture of a, of a, you know, beautiful woman in beautiful light and then to scratch her face out? You know, does it actually say anything about the person in front of the camera, behind the camera, the viewer? You know, yeah. so all of these questions are being raised, and even though you're using analog mediums, and you're, you're using analog kind of types of photography, um, you're addressing a question that, that probably wouldn't have been raised necessarily if it hadn't been for digital culture or um, digital communication. So, yeah. And we're, we're all very literate, but we still need to understand that language. You know, we can all read, but to really read well and to criticize, we need to understand the language well. And that's exactly what you know, you're doing with photography by studying it or, or using it in that way. Um, yeah, we can, we can all understand it. Because you know we, we see it, we picked it up in the paper when one of the first things we saw. But um, yeah, to really kind of undermine that or criticize it or think about it or use it differently—that's the challenge now. Um, and that's you know that's what you're all doing. Let's hope that this explosion of photography, digital, will make uh, some room in the education plan all over the world. Yes, to I mean teach people how to read photography. Yeah. I think that's uh, almost like learning yourself to read characters. And yeah. If you, if you look at a picture, you can say, oh, it's nice. But can you say why you like it, why it's nice? Can you take out all those feelings that comes with the, oh, it's nice. <laughs> yeah. or, to take it, or to take it for granted quite often. You know, a lot of photography is just put out there in the world, stock photography, advertising photography. Um, to kind of be, to be ignored, to not be criticized. Mm -hmm. um, and that's kind of made a normative, you know, that, that's what mums look like or that's what families look like. And it's, you know, we need to go, actually, that, no, 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 that's not what families look like. Yeah, um, I think it can, it can have uh, potentially kind of scary effects, especially with um, things like Facebook where photography is like so intrinsic to the way that it works and the way you're perceived. So the picture isn't necessarily just a representation, but becomes it kind of becomes you. Like your profile picture starts becoming you, and all your experiences that you put on Facebook through pictures um, kind of become the reality. When you look back at it, you remember only the things that you put up that you yeah. decided you wanted to remember. But what's I interesting about that like is, photo that, album. yeah, yeah I mean, what's interesting about that is that that's the purpose that photo albums used to serve. So yeah. A, so like a lot of people's first you know, quote unquote, first memories when they were kids are actually in their photograph albums, and you start to question, well, do you actually remember that event, or do you just remember it because there was a oh, photograph taken? Yeah. yeah. But what's interesting with with the social media networks like that is that is that you get in a situation where other people remember you, and understand you through that network. So your pictures yeah, really you more through your family album than your actual self. Yeah, and, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So there's, there's always going to be an element of performance because you have an audience now, whereas before you didn't, you know. Right. So um, that that's really strange. When you find out stuff or you see parts of, you know, your boss's body, which you know, you think, wow, I'm seeing that. Wow, that. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> um, so I, I'm fascinated by it. Going back to your question, I think it's I think it's a really exciting time at the moment for photography. Um, 
you know, we might not like it all, we might not, you know, we might find something uncomfortable or heading in the wrong direction, but it's all out there and it's all on display and we but what I, yeah. make our path through it. What I think, so, again, going back to the, the prize, you know, what I'm encouraged by in this prize is the fact that millions of photographs were submitted, you know, to this prize and still, you know, what surfaced was really interesting and engaging. It wasn't, you know, just the, the standard, you know, ignorable images. I mean, what, what came to the surface was something really fascinating. So, um, so that's, I mean, that's so, that's so encouraging to me that you can have a, a prize like this that's open to millions of people and millions of people send in their pictures and still within that mix, um, you know, we find great work, so. <clears throat> I got the feeling when I walked around in the Saatchi Gallery, when I saw the out of focus uh, exhibition and walked up to the Google Pictures, I just got struck by the feeling that this is where it happens. This is the new stuff. This is the best stuff. <laughs> we'll take over the world. Just give us five years. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. <laughs> I have another question. Is another kind of big one. Um, okay. I was just <laughs> wondering <laughs> what what do you think of. Um, Susan Sontag, Susan Sontag's writing on photography was kind of your um, general perception of her, of her book. I, th I think she's really important to read, absolutely. Yes. And if I think... I may interrupt. Um, I'm also interested, especially what do you think about Susan Sontag's um, article on interpretation? Okay. <laughs> Putting me on the spot I here. just read it recently <laughs> and it's really in my mind. Which, which Susan Sontag from on photography or what? what on photography and, uh, and on, on, on interpretation on how um, extremely important we uh, find it to interpret artworks uh, yeah. and how it, it is in our culture to interpret everything. All I think I think it's crucial and I, but I think with Susan Sontag what you've got to remember is photography has changed so much since she was writing. Um, and that legacy and everything that she said, and I would say the same for Roland Barthes, who are these two kind of touchstones for photography, understanding photography, interpretation and theory, they're really, really important, but we've got to move on. Um, they could never have anticipated how photography is now. They could never anticipate how much of it looks, um, how much, how, how, you know, as Aaron was saying, how, how it's become a, a public thing um, and how many there are in the world. So although they're, they're you know, they're, everything that they write about, you need to take, absorb, think about, but then you need to, you need to move on and, um, you know, read people who are writing more about more contemporary images and and figure it out for yourself as well, because it's it's a new and fast and changing world. So you have a role to play in understanding and interpreting those images. Um, how was the judging process? I mean, okay, pictures. It was actually one of the the most pleasurable and the most um, polite. <laughs> uh, judging ones that I have and everyone had their time and everyone really respected um, what people had to say about the work and they everyone listened to each other and and argued well you know people really fought your corners um, if they really were behind the work and if they didn't understand the work they would say I don't understand the work and then we'd talk about it um, it was all done uh, remotely uh, we weren't in a room together. Often, often judges are brought over to a room to look at prints or on a screen, but it was all done um, via the web and then uh, on a conference call. The last one, the last, the last final bit. Did you find that quite difficult, just looking at them uh, in digital format? Yeah, it's a very different experience, um, especially for those where the print is a very important part. Um, I would say probably actually all of you, um, Balaj, your, you know, the actual physical print is really, I can see that's really important. So mm -hmm. to see it on a screen is a very different thing. But you know, we get, we're all getting used to looking at photographs on, on screen. 
you know, we look at maybe a thousand a day. You know, so it's very we're all very used to that now. And to look at print is somewhat of a luxury now, uh, unfortunately, because mm. I like to pick them up. I'm very old fashioned. You know, I like I like to see the quality of a print. Um, and for editing as well, you know, when you're saying, you know, I like to lay everything out. Are there any more questions that anybody has for Susan about? I mean, I was curious. Can I just ask Susan? You, can I ask you one question, which is, was was being on the the jury for this this prize, the judging panel? It, did that in any way kind of um, feed into what you're what you're working on now? How, you were talking about looking at the world through this prism of photography. I'm just wondering what your interpretation, having looked at all of the the 50 finalists and then the 10 finalists, you know, if uh, if you if you gained anything from that? Yeah, I I mean, I really love doing these big judging things because. It allows you to, you know, I, ca I feel I can't write about contemporary photography unless I know what people like you are doing um, and what your photography looks like and what it's, it's um, concerning itself with. And you find themes that repeat and tropes that repeat and, and the way that photographs look um, can often be very similar and, and change from year to year. Um, so, for example, when I when I was teaching in Britain, I it was kind of at the height of staged photography, and so every student seemed to be doing these big elaborate tableaus, and I so wasn't interested. I so lost interest in all that. It's just like I'm just seeing it again and again and again. So I stopped for a bit. I stopped teaching, and when I came back to teaching again, that all that had gone very quickly and very suddenly. And people seem very interested in photography in itself. What is photography? Um, you know, there was an, a return to vernacular photography in the studio, and people experimenting with um, film much more. And it felt like a, a lovely breath of fresh air. You know, that photography had kind of freed itself up. So when a judge, when this, this kind of judging panel comes up, you can see, oh, right, people are young people, which you, know, you all are and I'm not, um, <laughs> are much uh, are concerned with you know, the, these kind of issues um, and thinking about photography and thinking about life in that kind of way. I mean, it's huge generalizations because obviously it's just a small snippet of people, but it does allow me to, to see or understand a little better um, what 19-year-olds are of thinking and looking at, and that's always good. That's because you yeah, know. Yeah, I mean, what I was what I was struck by as well, looking at all the a, a lot, loads of the entries and being being one of those early judges, is that inevitably there are cliches and and cliche images that always pop up. There are cliche projects that pop up. You know, it's um, the kind of the Google image world of photography yeah. where people are are mimicking what they think good photography is. But inevitably, you know, by the people we have present here and the the ten finalists that. You know, amongst that are some really original and interesting and diverse bodies of work, where people are engaging with photography in in, in, in unique ways, in original ways, and, and kind of ways that people haven't played with it or tried tried to do things with it before. Yeah. Um, and and and, to, and and for those things just to surface out of this kind of international call for photographs, um, I think is is a real testament to the well the the judges, but also to, you know a testament to the fact that that this medium isn't dead, that it's continuing to grow in, in really diverse and interesting ways, that there's always a new generation that's going to challenge it and, and uh, introduce something new um, into the mix, um, so that, that despite the fact that there are these, you can, you can search any word and, and find thousands of images of, of, uh, of, of the same ilk or the same, the same type, that inevitably amongst them there's going to be something that, that really stands out as, as, a, as a new uh, and interesting take on it. Yeah, I mean, that, that was actually one of the big challenges of this prize, um, whereas the other prizes that I've tended to judge have been fine art prizes. This, this was everything. Mm. And, uh, you know, you're judging sports photography against fine art or fashion photography against um, something much more classic. And it's like apples and pears. You know, it's like, how can you compare? How can you find a winner in all that? Um, and in literature, you would never have that. You wouldn't have a competition for journalism, novels, and poetry. But in photography, it's all kind of plumped together. So that was challenging. That was much more challenging um, 
than we had all expected. And the judges tend to, tended to come from a fine art background. So the fact that a sports photographer got the prize, I think, you know, it, it kind of surprised us all, you know, and we, and we went, oh, look, 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 <laughs> you know, um, because it was kind of off radar for a lot of us. So that, that, was, that was really challenging and interesting for us as well. Well, that's uh, nice to hear. <laughs> uh, I just I, I want to concur with you, Susan. You told uh, that the ten finalists uh, they stood out from all the cliches. Doing yeah, absolutely. So with doing something that they uh, they really like and what they were interested of. Yeah, and also it, what also came up is like there were just some great strong images, mm. um, and this, this, people tend to work in series now. But actually, in amongst that mix of the final ten, where the, there were just some stunning images, and how how refreshing that was to actually just just to go, wow, look at that, isn't that great? Um, and that that that's really just such a, a simple, pure reaction to photography. Um, that a lot of the, the final ten had, and so we were really, we were really pleased. We were really pleased with that. Sounds like you had a good time. We did, <laughs> <laughs> which is not always the case with judging. So uh, no. no, it, it looks good. like it looks like you had a good time too, all of you. <laughs> yeah, it was uh, it was perfect. It was so nice, nice in London. <laughs> yeah, it, and kind of extraordinary. It must have felt extraordinary to have your your photographs hanging there. How, how did how did that feel? I was so impressed by just the gallery, and uh, I mean there were so many people just working at the Saatchi gallery, and so big. <laughs> <laughs> I was also impressed by the, by the quality and the the quality of the whole exhibition and the pictures and the prints, and the other exhibition at Saatchi gallery was was really um, an experience as well. Yeah, I bet. amazing. I just found it kind of uh, hard to believe when I when I got there and just kind of saw these things that I had created on this wall and like thousands of people were going to look at them. It was it was hard to believe that I kind of uh, did that or they, the pictures were mine. Yeah, did you feel more detached from them? Or did yeah, a little bit. It was it was quite strange. <laughs> and how about you, Dana? I think it was a big honor to be in the same gallery as such big photographers because the out of focus uh, show was amazing and I felt really honored to be in the same gallery as these people. Yeah, no it, it must have been, yeah I, can, I can't really imagine it's, it's when all that, it's like when I produce a book and I've been working on it and it's so close to me and it comes out as a product, it doesn't really feel like mine anymore. It feels like, oh, yes. it's a book. And, and actually, I, it's like kryptonite. I can't read it. I can't look at it. I can't touch it. Um, it's like it becomes everyone else's. Like a yeah, yeah. And something that you've, is so personal to you. And it takes me a long time to then pick up the book and take a breath and read it and go, oh, okay, it reads like a book. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> There's something quite nice about that, though, about uh, taking a part of yourself and showing it to everyone and just kind of... Uh, being disconnected from it, but so other people can connect to it. Yeah, and I guess that's exactly what it must feel when it was up there in the gallery. It was yeah. like, wow, wow. And I think that's, and I think that's what's important about these types of prizes and these types of spaces, and and the fact that that all of you, you know, anybody and everybody was invited to be part of this prize as well. Is that is that everybody's invited to kind of share themselves with with uh, with the rest of the world, and that's not an opportunity that a lot of people necessarily have. Yeah. So, yeah. Right. Nope. Anything else? No. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, thanks so much, Susan. Yeah, thanks thank, so much. thank you all. Thanks for sharing your time. Thank yeah, you. and thanks so much for joining us, everybody. And I would really encourage mm -hmm. anybody who's watching this in the future to um, check out the Google Photography Prize uh, winning, winning uh, finalist page um, so they can all see your work, which will be up there forever and ever, uh, and to follow your careers closely. And uh, best of luck to all yeah, of you. Congratulations. And congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Take care. Thanks, everybody.